Good morning, and welcome to this online worship service with the Old Presbyterian Meeting House in Alexandria, Virginia. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, and wherever you are near or far, know that you are welcome here. This is our fourth Sunday of online worship. While we miss being with you in person, we are grateful for this way of being connected and worshiping together. Those of you who receive our weekly egram should have received a simple bulletin in your email. That same information is available on our website, or you may simply follow along as we worship together in spirit. Today is Palm Sunday, and we mark Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, remembering the crowds that gathered with palms waving and hosannas rising into the air. We also observe today as Passion Sunday, looking toward all that will happen in the week that is to come, as Jesus obediently and willingly will give his life for the world. As we prepare our hearts for worship this day, the Lord be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Let us worship God. coming, humble and riding on a donkey. Hosanna, Hosanna to, to the, the son, son of David. David. Lay your cloaks before him. Spread palms to honor him. Blessed, Blessed is the, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Raise your voices. Lift your hearts. Rejoice. Our Savior comes. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. heaven.
Friends, even as we shout Hosanna, we're mindful of our sins, where we've missed the mark, where we have separated ourselves from God and from each other. So we come together in this sacred space, wherever we are, to offer our prayer of confession. Let us pray. The journey journey you lead, lead, O Lord, Lord, is is draining, draining, demanding, and fraught with danger. You ask us to stay by your side as you make your way through Jerusalem to the cross. But weariness and fear overtake us. Like the first disciples, we are quick to betray you, deny you, abandon you. Forgive us, we pray, and strengthen us for the journey ahead. Give us courage to face the pain and suffering of this world and to respond with compassion. As the darkness gathers, renew our faith, fill us with hope, and startle us with your grace. Hear now the prayers we bring to you in silence. Your God has come to you, humble, in the form of a slave, to free you from the weight of sin and death. Jesus' obedient suffering has released you. So know that your sins are forgiven, in the name of the one who is exalted beyond what we can comprehend, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We begin in chapter 21 as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, and then we will move ahead to chapter 27, where Jesus appears before Pilate, beginning in chapter 21, verses 1 through 10. When they had come near Jerusalem 
and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? Continuing in chapter 27, verses 11 through 14 and 24 through 31. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. May God bless these words to our hearing and our understanding. Amen. Hello, everyone. We're so glad you can join us for the time with children. It's the Palmerer family. Hi, this is Chris. Hi, this is Blake. And this is Susan and... This is John. Today we are remembering a very special event in the life of Jesus. Today is a special name. Do you know what it is? Palm Sunday. That's Palm right. Sunday. Today is called Palm Sunday, and we remember it as the day Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. The people were so excited that Jesus was coming to the city. They cut down palm branches and waved them for him in the air to welcome him just like some of you did in the pictures of our virtual procession. As Jesus rode into the city, he shouted, Hosanna, which means praise the Lord. Hosanna. 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 Praise the Lord. The people celebrated and cheered on Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem. We've been talking about people praising Jesus and waving palm branches, which are types of leaves that come from a tree. Now I'd like you to look at your hands. The part of your hand that connects all of your fingers together is also called a palm. Are these? Yep. How many fingers do you have on each hand? Five. Great. Today after worship, at lunch or dinner, or any time that works for your family, we would like you to think of five ways to praise God. 
Five praises for God can be anything that you're thankful for. For example, here are five of our praises. I'm thankful for birthdays. Jacob, what are you thankful for? Um, the birthdays. Birthdays. And I'm thankful for people who deliver groceries to my front door. John, what are you grateful for? Um, cookies. Good answer. And as a family, we're thankful for the time together and for all those that are taking care of people in need. This story of Jesus is the first story of a very special week known as Holy Week. Later this week, we will, be, we will have worship, recognizing Jesus' last supper with his disciples. We call this Monday Thursday. On Friday, we will have worship to remember the day Jesus died on the cross. And then next Sunday, we celebrate the good news, which is what? Easter. Easter. You're right. Celebrating that Jesus is alive. We spend this week getting ready for Easter by remembering the stories of Jesus' last days and remembering the the love Jesus has for each of us. So let us pray. Remember, guys, you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, God, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for always loving us. Thank you for loving us. Yep, always loving us. And help us share. Help us share. Your love with others. Love with others. Amen. Amen. May God be with you there. May God be with us here. May God be with everyone everywhere. Go in peace. Let us pray. Let your word, O God, break open our hearts, that today and throughout Holy Week, we may be of the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. It is hard to imagine a Palm Sunday like this one. The plans that were made weeks ago no longer apply. Instead of parading into the sanctuary, waving our palm branches, singing Hosanna together, we're hosting a number of private parades, waving whatever we have on hand, and singing our Hosannas mostly to ourselves. Instead of sitting together in church in our normal pews, we once again sit apart from one another in our own homes, on our own well-worn sofas and chairs. The Palm Sunday Parade ain't what it used to be, and yet, and yet it goes on in a new way for a new time. Ironically, the first Palm Sunday Parade was also a new way of doing things for a new time. Jesus was a new kind of king, who espoused and embodied a new kind of kingdom. And we can see this in the way that Matthew tells the story. He tells us Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey instead of a war horse, as Pilate had likely done. And he did it knowing that it would lead him to a cross, not a crown. As I said, it was a different kind of parade. Jesus could have stayed away, In fact, whenever he spoke of going to Jerusalem, his disciples urged him against it. They knew there were powerful people there who were plotting against him. They knew Jerusalem would almost certainly be the place of his death. And yet, as Matthew affirmed several times, Jesus set his face to go there, and he did. Upon his arrival, Jesus was quickly surrounded by a very large crowd of people, some of whom wished him well and some of whom wished him ill. Some threw down their coats for a welcome mat. Others used palm branches cut from the surrounding trees. Some sang Hosanna to the son of David. Others hatched plans to shut him up. To paraphrase Jill Duffield, The whole scene was a mixed bag of human emotions, opinions, understanding, and perspectives. Even the disciples weren't prepared for what was about to happen. Yet, Jesus made his way to Jerusalem and the cross, knowing all of that and more. He knew their need of him, even if they did not. According to Matthew, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. We don't know, of course, what the turmoil was all about. Maybe it had to do with the ongoing clash between the Jews and the Romans. 
Maybe it had to do with the huge influx of people crowding the city for Passover, overloading the hospitality industry and taxing the patience of law enforcement. Or maybe, maybe it had to do with the outbreak of some new illness transmitted by all the tourists and religious pilgrims. But what we do know is this. The people in Jerusalem needed Jesus, whether they knew it or not. We know what it's like to be in turmoil. Thanks to the coronavirus, cities and countries all around the world are in turmoil. In fact, there's turmoil right here in Alexandria as we and other citizens shelter in place, waiting for the all clear signal to venture out in public. There's turmoil as we are kept from visiting a family member in the hospital and from gathering to mourn the loss of a friend or loved one. There's turmoil as we are kept from working and worshiping with others and from playing and communing with friends and neighbors. There's turmoil as we dash through drugstores and grocery stores in search of products we have long taken for granted. There's turmoil as we watch and listen to scientists and politicians debate policies and procedures that will affect our lives for years to come. And so, here we are, in our homes, hunkered down like millions of other people throughout the world, waiting, hoping, and praying, praying for someone to find something, do something, that will help stop the spread of this awful virus and put an end to this turmoil. Here we are, joining our voices with those in ancient Jerusalem, singing, Hosanna, save us, Lord. But let us not despair, because now as in ancient Jerusalem, Jesus meets us where we are and as we are, knowing how much we need him. He meets us in our homes and hospitals. He meets us in new places of work and worship. He meets us as we worry and pray apart from those we know and love. He meets us as we sing and parade in a new and different way. Say what you will about Jesus. He enters fully into our lives and world suffering alongside of us, even to the point of death. Yes, his is a different kind of parade. Nothing can stop it. Not you, not me, not some religious or political official, not even some virus. Jesus is on the move even now. He's not hunkered down in the meeting house or in any other church for that matter. He is on the move, parading into our cities, our homes, and our lives. According to Will Willimon, Jesus is on the move, not necessarily to fix what is wrong in the world, but to reclaim the world. And sometimes, well, sometimes Jesus does nothing more than to bear witness to what's wrong, to shoulder it, to take it up with us and to stand beside us. This is the fate Jesus took upon himself. He could have bypassed Jerusalem and the cross, but then he would not have been this kind of savior he was. As I said, his is a different kind of parade, a parade that cannot be stopped even by a cross. So friends, among other things, that means it's never too late to join it. So if you've not done so already, I invite you to throw down a coat or wave a palm branch and sing your hosannas because Jesus is still on the move and he will not stop until the work of God's kingdom is completed. For centuries, People of faith have responded to God's word by stating what they believed. Following their example, let us respond using words from a declaration of faith. 
We confess that in the execution of Jesus, the sin of the human race reached its depths. The only innocent one was condemned and put to death, not by the sinfulness of one nation, but by the sinfulness of us all. In the presence of Jesus, who lived out what God wants us all to be, we were threatened beyond endurance. Blinded by our rebellion against our Creator, we killed his son when we met him face to face. In his lonely agony on the cross, Jesus was acting on behalf of God, manifesting God's love that takes on itself the loneliness, pain, and death that result from our waywardness. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self, not holding our sins against us. He is our only hope in life and in death. We extend a warm welcome to everyone gathered here in our sacred space for virtual worship, wherever you may be sheltering in place. Whether you're a longtime member or visiting our online worship for the very first time, we hope you'll feel God's presence here. We encourage everyone to explore new ways of connecting with the church and with one another. Check out our weekly egram for new opportunities for discipleship. And please be in touch with me or Rocky or Anne if you're in need of pastoral care or help of any kind. One of the most important expressions of our discipleship, especially while we are not gathering in person during this time, is our giving. We remain in uncharted waters, not just socially and spiritually, but emotionally and economically. Like so many institutions, the church is being challenged in ways we could not have foreseen just weeks ago. To meet this challenge, we must continue to give generously and perhaps sacrificially of our time, talent, and treasure. We cannot continue to support our many programs and staff without your help. To that end, I encourage you to stay current with your pledges and, if possible, to consider an increase to help cover and care for those who have been financially impacted by this virus. If we all contribute our fair share, we can meet the challenge and be the church we are called to be. We can continue to explore new ways to connect online through study and small fellowship and prayer groups to engage our children and youth with home activities and Zoom groups. Our ministries can continue to meet online, along with the diaconate and session, to fulfill the work of the church, including giving to our many mission partners who are especially vulnerable during this time. You may send your check to the church as always, or visit our website at opmh.org for online and text giving options. On this Palm Passion Sunday, let us give generously as God has given to us. And now, let us pray. O oh God, life giver, even during this strange and scary time as we hunker down in our homes, you sustain your weary world day by day with your word and yearn for us to place our trust in you. Awaken us to the suffering of those around us. Open our hearts to the compassion you call us to. Save us from hiding in denials or taunts that deepen the hurt. Give us grace to share one another's burdens in humble service. O oh God, pain bearer, Caught between joy and despair, we yearn for the fulfillment of God's desire beyond the brokenness and neediness of this life. We offer thanksgiving for your presence with us, for this glorious spring day filled with hope even as we worship apart, and for all the new families in our virtual midst, even as we pray for the transformation of the world and for an end to this virulent virus. Help us to do your healing, reconciling, peacemaking work by opening our hearts to those in need, in pain, 
in mourning as you wrap loving arms around us all. O oh God, love maker, open our hearts to the blessed one who comes so humbly on a borrowed cult. Open before us the gates of your justice that we may enter, confessing in heaven and on earth that Jesus is Lord and praying the prayer together that he taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, and be at peace, knowing that he is with you and all people this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>